I think Zumba is uh, one of the few uh, group fitness classes that releases all brain chemicals at the same time. And so like minute 21 of a Zumba class, we call it the hype state. And that's the moment where they all kick in at the same time and you're just elevated, lost in the music, and you feel like you're another planet just having so much fun. So that's, I think, why everyone should try a Zumba class. Hi, I'm Lauren Parsons. And I'm Andy Jackson, and this is the All Well Co podcast. Dive deep with us as leading experts share their unique perspectives on topics such as recovery, sleep, movement, and the latest innovations in the space. Hey, welcome, Alberto. It's a real pleasure to have you on the All Well Co podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. And before we dive into, you know, kind of your unique perspective on things, could you kind of give our audience an overview of how you and I met and how you got connected to All Welcome? Oh, yeah. Well, we met in London, a, I don't know the year, years ago, maybe 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. You think it's uh, only that? I was thinking 20, but met, who knows? Maybe 15. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't even know. I've lost count, but uh, that's when... Uh, you were with Les Mills in the UK and, you know, we're colleagues promoting group fitness and trying to get more people to work out together. And yeah, and we became fast friends and it's been, it's been great. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Bogota, Colombia. Okay. And then do you think where you grew up kind of has affected who you are today? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, Bogota was Bogota was a very dangerous place when I was growing up. It's not that dangerous anymore, but it was the time when I was in high school and uh, Pablo Escobar was, you know, bombing uh, buildings and and terrorizing the city and you know, the whole country. And so yeah, I think it it obviously does affect uh, does affect me in many ways when I you know when I get triggered by situations similar to what happened in Colombia and like what's happening in Venezuela right now and yeah like that, you know like so it definitely does have huge impact yeah and from growing up to who you are today has your passions changed or have you changed how have you kind of flourished into who you are yeah, my my passion as a kid uh, was uh, always related to the creativity of building something, and uh, I loved the idea of business, and I loved it just because there was a creativity to it. You needed to solve for something, and my first exposure to this was I had a I was four years old. And I had this watch that my grandfather had given me that had a little game on it. I don't even remember what the game was, but it was the early days of those yeah. uh, types of, of games. And there was a kid in my class who loved it and he always wanted to play. And he told me on a Friday, he's like, can I take it home? And I said, well, if you give me, I don't even remember what it was, a thousand pesos, I will let you take it home and bring it back on Monday. This is four year old kid. Like think about a four year old kid <laughs> and, and I would do it weekend after weekend. And my mom found money in my, in my drawer. And she's like, why do you have this money? And I told her the story and she called his mom and made, made me return the money. But cause he had given me like all his birthday money or something, but it was, you know, like my first kind of business experience. And my dad was also out. He was like, oh, he invented renting. He doesn't even know what it is, but he was renting something. And in high school, I, I all the seniors needed a parking spaces because I, there was a lack of parking spaces. And I made a deal with a piece of land, a guy who was, who was like squatting on a piece of land in front of the school. And we created a little parking lot and solved something for the seniors and for me that I needed to park. And it helped this guy who was completely broke to have some income. So I just love the idea of creating opportunities and, and solving for things. I love that. You've been hustling since day one. Yeah. That's, uh, 
That's awesome. So I know music is really integral into just Zumba and, you know, your life. What was the last thing that you searched for on Spotify? Other than our podcast. Hmm. <laughs> last thing that I searched for on Spotify it was probably Carol G. We, we launched a song with her and we launched her latest single at same time, same day that she launched it, we launched it. So she gave it to us in advance and I was probably searching up how it's trending. And it's, I think it's like seven in the world right now or something like that worldwide. Awesome. So she's amazing. And, and we're happy to work with artists like her and seeing them trend and seeing Zumba, you know, add a, uh, something to their success because we, we make them trend all over the world. Like now she has fans in Taiwan and she has fans in Africa and she has fans in, in countries that maybe would have not known her because of Zumba. That's incredible. So Alberto, yeah, obviously you've given us an overview that you were a hustler from age four. Um, when did you know that you wanted to choose this current career path? So to be the business of Zumba, et cetera. And what surprised you the most when you first started? Yeah. So I wouldn't say hustler is the right word because I'm, I'm not into so much of the deal making part, but more into the creativity of yeah. creating things that people want. And I, my first business that I started was an incubator for internet businesses related to Latin America in 1999. I was right out of college, one year out of college. And I'm like, oh, this thing called internet, people are going to use it to, to buy stuff and people are going to use it to search for things. And people are like, it was, it was brand new that time, especially in Latin America. And so I moved to Miami. I was in New York at that time working for a consulting firm. I, I, I left the consulting firm and started this incubator, started incubating these internet businesses, raised money and, and started, you know, partnering with entrepreneurs and coming up with ideas and saying, well, Latin America, people are going to need to do this in order to access the internet or this is going, and it was a little early for its time. And plus the dot com bubble happened and then it burst. So that was a crazy ride, crazy couple of years. And so we decided to stop incubating companies and give back some of the money to the investors and say like, there's no, we're not going to just keep taking salaries here. And there's no companies to incubate because the dot com bubble bursting was pretty traumatic and people didn't want to invest. People thought the internet was not going to work in 2001. It's crazy to think back. That's crazy. And so I was having dinner at my parents' house and my mom and all my cousins and every female that was there, it was a, it was a big dinner. And they were all talking about this fitness class that they were taking. It was called Roomba with an R. And this instructor named Beto is now my business partner. And, and they were just raving about it. And at that moment, my mom said, maybe she knew that I was out of a job. And she's like, maybe you and him can start a gym or something. I'm like, I don't have a gym, but because uh, I don't know anything about, about gyms and retail, but I know a little bit about infomercials. I had done a consulting project uh, when I was in New York related to the infomercial industry. And I'm like, this could be a great box set of VHS tapes. Remember that time was still VHS, VHS tapes mm -hmm. that we could sell on TV for people to do this Roomba class at home. And so my mom called up Beto and said, and my son wants to meet you to have a cup of coffee, talk to you about an idea. And, and the next day we were at Starbucks on here, in Miami. And we, we started talking about it and he, he then told me, hey, I love what you're telling me, but you got to come see my class before we shake hands on it. And that afternoon I went to see his class and what I saw was incredible. Just a hundred people uh, drenched in sweat, but smiling all the way through it. And he was on stage like a rock star and just everyone was in awe. And I don't know if you've guys have ever watched the Zumba class, but even watching the Zumba class is fun. And oh the, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen, him, I've seen him teaching like 3000 at a time. I've yeah. seen him in those big yeah. festivals and stuff. That's crazy. Actually, about as you're talking about Beto, how did he start? How did he come up with the idea yeah. of the class? That, I'm, I'm fascinated about that. 
Yeah, yeah. So he, so he was a a kid in Cali, Colombia during the the drug wars, the, the craziest time. Cali was even more dangerous than Bogota, and everyone was a drug dealer in Cali, like everyone. And uh, there was this kid, is Beto, is uh, he was this very uh, humble kid, uh, basically dancing on the streets and you know teaching aerobics. And uh, through he learned to teach aerobics with a Jane Fonda book that he borrowed from the local library. <laughs> And uh, at night he would uh, dance at nightclubs and they would pay him. And all these like little drug dealers would tell him, you go dance with all the women, all the girlfriends and the wives and everyone while we do our business. And so he would stand on top of a speaker and dance with uh, all these people. And one day he was teaching aerobics and he forgot his aerobics music and all he had was a tape that he had recorded from the radio remember when you could record from the radio mm -hmm. oh, yeah you could do it legally yeah. yeah and then when the when the dj spoke he ruined it and you had to record again <laughs> uh -huh. and, and you had to press play record at the press same time when yeah. the same oh, time. your siblings started talking and you're like come on yeah exactly so uh, beto had recorded this tape and it was a uh, salsa and merengue uh, that was really hot at that time in the 80s and the 90s. And, and it was the 80s. It was probably the late 80s. And he said, I prepared a new class for you guys. It's something I've been working on for a long time. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm not going to talk. Just follow what I'm doing. And he had obviously not prepared it, but he's really good at improvising. And he just taught that class. And, and they were like, what's that class called? And he said, Roomba. Roomba means to party. He said, I call it rumba. And so that was the first class he ever taught was a, was an accident. Like, uh, he forgot his tape and then the, all he wanted was that class and became very popular in Cali. Then he took it to Bogota where instead of being paid $1, he would be paid $2 or whatever like it was. Yeah. And in Bogota, a Sony music saw him uh, teaching the class and said, you'll be great to choreograph for one of our new artists. Her name is Shakira. And so he choreographed for her, Bogota, but he kept going back to fitness. He didn't want to be a choreographer. And in 1999, he sold everything he had with the dream of uh, showing his class uh, here in the U.S., uh, showing it to people in Miami. And I really had a rough time trying to get a, an audition because he didn't speak any English. And he slept in a park for two days, ran out of money. Finally, he was able to show what he could do and they loved him and you know started becoming popular here in Aventura Florida of all places and that's that was his story and his yeah. story is there's a telenovela of his story the Telemundo did a telenovela 60 episodes ah, that's fantastic. of his life story so it's, it's crazy yeah he, he has many stories how did the name change how did you so, decide the name change yeah so we couldn't trademark the word rumba because there's a ballroom dance called rumba and it means to party so it wouldn't have been a defensible trademark when you're thinking about a trademark it needs to be pretty distinctive otherwise if it sounds too much like what it is people can say no i wasn't teaching that rumba class yeah. i was just teaching rumba the dance the ballroom dance or whatever so our, our the lawyer we met told us we need we need to come up with a new name and so we we sat at a restaurant and coming up, trying to come up with things that rhymed with Roomba and Woomba sounded like a pregnancy workout. So Woomba didn't make it. <laughs> so we landed <laughs> on Zumba. And when we said Zumba, we all said, that's it. It sounds like what it is. Yeah. So true. That's super interesting. Yeah. So yeah that true. makes a lot of sense. So we'll have listeners who work with athletes, fitness enthusiasts, and just people that want to be healthier in general. Why should they try a Zumba class? I think Zumba is uh, one of the few uh, group fitness classes that releases all brain chemicals at the same time. So uh, you get dopamine because dopamine is the molecule of anticipation. You're anticipating what song is he going to play next? Like what move are they going to do next? Like you get dopamine from that because it's so the variety of the moves and the moves are so fun. 
you get serotonin because of the music. Like music is, is really good at delivering serotonin, especially uh, the type of music we use. You get oxytocin because you are with other people. And that's the, the love molecule, right? It's the one where, you know, you feel close to people and you're with other people, but you're dancing with them. And there's something that happens when you dance with other people that's different than if you're doing push-ups with other people. It's there's, you know, that's, that's why a lot of people in Zumba become such close friends. Mm -hmm. And the fourth chemical is obviously the chemical we all trade in here in the fitness industry, which is endorphins. And so like minute 21 of a Zumba class, we call it the hype state. And that's the moment where they all kick in at the same time and you're just elevated, lost in the music, and you feel like you're on another planet just having so much fun. So that's, I think, why everyone should try a Zumba class. Isn't it, isn't it such a cool story that two Colombians came from the drug capital of the world and now you're dealing in the healthiest drugs in the world and getting yes. the world to move healthy. That's absolutely oh, I love and it's that. Three Colombians. story. And it's Brilliant. three Colombians because the other one's also Alberto. So and Beto's oh, short for Alberto. Yeah. So it's yeah. three Albertos from Colombia. Who are now pushing the healthiest drugs in the world. Love it. Doing a very different type of drug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, I was reading today that Denmark is doing something called culture vitamins as a treatment for depression and anxiety in Denmark. And what they call culture vitamins is saying, go and dance with other people. Uh, go yeah. and do something outside. Go and, like, go and do something at, at, the, at the local museum with other people. Yeah. And... It's so, so when we said drugs, I'm like, yeah, it's a drug, it's a vitamin, it's whatever. Like, absolutely, it's yeah. getting together with other people is a bigger predictor of longevity than anything else. It's crazy. And that was the one, like, the, the Harvard did a study for 85 years and they found this group of people who, like, they smoked, they drank, they were not very healthy lifestyles, but they were always with other people and that extended their lifespan. So, yeah. I think that there's a, there's a, I mean, the Surgeon General said uh, the biggest epidemic right now is, is loneliness. We're all connected mm -hmm. on phones and, and email and, and social media and everybody, but we're lonely. And, yeah. and Zumba's really, I think, one of the best cures for loneliness because of the connection you get with the people in the class. I'm excited to talk about that more. I know we have that later. Um, but before we move on, you mentioned the music. What goes into curating the music? Do you have teams that kind of put together start to finish? It seems like yeah. the music itself is really important. Our music team is actually one of the biggest teams uh, that we have in the company. And our music team does many things from licensing uh, music from famous artists, working with the artists before they release the song so that we have a launch plan for the song that they can get the, the Zumba benefit uh, for that song, the, like the worldwide exposure, because we reach 15 million people every week. So all the artists want to have their song playing in Zumba classes because it just gives them a ton of exposure. But we also create our own music. And we started creating our own music in the early days uh, because we felt sometimes that we couldn't find the right song for a certain part of the class for a certain rhythm, right? If uh, we wanted samba, for example, and we couldn't find the right samba, so we started creating our own. And this was 15 years ago, started working with producers and we started working with writers. And uh, now that's become something that we call the Zumba Music Lab. And the Zumba Music Lab uh, holds these music camps where we bring the same writers who write for J Balvin, which is a very big Latin artist, mm -hmm. or uh, BTS, the K-pop group, uh, uh, art, uh, writers who write for Daddy Yankee, like some of the biggest writers and producers also work on Zumba Music in the Zumba Music Lab. Uh, and every month we're getting together, creating music, and we create hundreds and hundreds of songs, and then we pick the best songs to make it to the, the Zin volume, which is like the album, right? And the Zin volume we release every two months, and it's the class that we deliver to our instructors that they can choose. They can pick and choose. They can we mix it up. We let them tell their story when they're teaching. That was very important for Beto. It's like if they want to use a song 
that is not in the Zen volume and it's a famous, they can incorporate it in. We teach them how to choreograph it. And, and, but music is everything. Music, Beto always says music is 70% of a Zumba class. So our instructors are, are as much uh, DJs as they are uh, yeah. instructors. That's super cool. So do I need to be fit to try a class? Do I need to know how to dance or follow choreography? Who, who can yeah. do this? Yeah, that's the, the, the greatest uh, blessing we had is, and we, when we have went into this, I didn't know anything about the fitness industry. Like it was just, I just thought it was cool. And I just loved seeing people have so much fun with it. And in 2008, uh, URSA, which is uh, now called the health and fitness association, which is the biggest fitness association here in the U S uh, gave us an award, the John McCarthy visionary award for being the class that has brought in the most people into the fitness industry. So people who were non-exercisers, non-dancers, people who were sitting on the couch and Zumba brought them in because it was different, because it was easy to follow, because you could do it at your own pace and because uh, people liked the idea of having fun. And, and so we were very proud. That was one of my proudest moments in my whole career is winning that award because we made a difference. We made an impact it used to be that 85% of people were not working out and 15% of people are working out. Now it's more in the 20 something percent of people that are working out. And we like to think that we, we were part of that uh, trend to make more people start working out. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things I've always admired about uh, Zumba and what you guys do is that you built a really, really amazingly strong community. And obviously I was involved in a, another group fitness type yeah. uh, project, which was probably a little bit more serious in terms of the way that it developed, but did also the same thing, built a big, uh, big community. Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, your community, how you support the community and, and why is community so important to you, but more importantly, the people who come to your classes? Yeah, I think community is everything. There's many layers in the Zumba community. There's the community that happens in a local class and how those people become friends and become connected. Like I remember a story at the Zumba convention, an instructor was telling us that she was in Italy. She lives in Italy and that she had a flat tire and she, instead of reaching out to her friends, uh, her friends that were non-Zumba friends, she reached out to her Zumba class on WhatsApp and said, can anybody help me with this flat tire? And five minutes later, there was someone there and she felt more comfortable with them. So, my, and like, there's so many, like uh, my wife has so many friends from that she made in Zumba class. So that is the local community. And, and there's a lot of people that also tell us that they show up in a new place and they don't know anyone. And in order to meet people, they just go to a Zumba class and everybody's so friendly. So that's one community, but then there's the instructor community and our instructor community is amazing. And I think one of the things that makes it so, so unique is that everybody has a style of Zumba and everybody brings in their own rhythms. And even Beto doesn't know how to dance all the rhythms. Like we went to New Zealand and the Kiwis were teaching him Kiwi dances in of the Aborigines in New Zealand, That's right? Like, amazing. so it's, uh, and he actually traveled around the world uh, when we made our second video game to learn dances from different places of the world. So the cool thing about this is you go to other people's classes as a Zuma instructor and you learn so much and you see new moves and you see new rhythms and that connects you. And so many instructors tell us, oh yeah, I went to France and I stayed in, another instructor's house and I didn't even know this instructor and they invited me there and like it, there's the Zumba traveling, there's Zumba celebrities, there's celebrities inside the Zumba community and they teach master classes uh, all over the world and people attend their master classes and they travel and Zumba, there was, there's one who lives here in Miami called Loretta Bates and she was telling me yesterday that she's been to more than 105 countries to teach master classes and Zumba is the thing that she would have never gone to many of these countries and she ended up going because of Zumba. And so everybody connects uh, th through the love of dance and the love of Zumba. And it's, it's amazing to see it happen. It took on a life of its own. I almost feel this is, this is not a company. This is a movement 
and I have like the the delicate job of just making sure that people are connecting the right way in the movement, but it takes on a life of its own. Yeah. yeah. You're one of the few that truly does have a global reach. And this was all made before social media. So how did you guys do this? How did you do that? So it, it was really the infomercial that helped us do it. So we became famous in 2003 in the US when we were running this, the first Zumba infomercial. And people started calling us saying that they wanted to become Zoom instructors because they had seen this on TV. They had bought the VHS tapes and now they wanted to teach it in their local YMCA in YMCA in Dayton, Ohio, right? Or wherever, mm -hmm. right? And, and so then we found distributors for the infomercials and we didn't know this was going to happen, but in other countries. And so in the UK was one of our, our first markets. And actually the Netherlands was our first market where we sold the rights to the infomercial and we were selling the DVDs at that time to this distributor in the Netherlands. And so she starts running the infomercial and we start seeing that people want to become instructors in the Netherlands. And we started hosting trainings in the Netherlands and they were always, always sold out. And then the UK started running the infomercial distributor in the UK and we weren't hosting trainings yet. And people from the UK would go to the Netherlands to become instructors. And so mm -hmm. everywhere we would launch the infomercial, we would kind of get famous in that market and then people wanted to become instructors. And then there were some markets that happened differently, like Korea was a little bit different. We worked with different influencers and uh, different TV channels and different companies to kind of create the, the, the brand awareness followed by uh, people wanting to become instructors. Yeah. Where are your strongest community communities located and why are they there? Yeah, so the U.S. is our biggest uh, community of instructors, followed by Germany and Japan. And it's crazy because you wouldn't think. You would think, oh, it's probably Colombia or it's probably Brazil. or. Mm. Uh, but I think the, the newness of, of the type of dancing that we have at Zumba was, was unique in Germany and very unique in Japan. And people fell in love with it and they felt free. A lot of these yeah. communities were maybe uh, there's more structure to their job and more structure to life. And suddenly they get an hour of a uh, feeling like a uh, Latina uh, going crazy, <laughs> dancing mm -hmm. and happiness. And that freedom just kind of, uh, they, they, they get addicted to it and they want to do it every day. Yeah. We talked about loneliness before, and I'm really curious to hear your thoughts because it's, it is a huge issue. Why does Zumba work? Why does Zumba work? Is it the happy chemicals? Is it the team approach? Um, why does yeah, it work? Right. Why does it work for a community? I think it's, it's obviously the happy chemicals. And it's like I said before, I think when you dance with other people, there's a different connection than when you're doing squats with other people. And you laugh, people, you see someone laughing at themselves, you see someone laughing at giggling in the class. Uh, you see the instructor interacting, the, instru the Zoom instructors, a good Zoom instructor interacts with the class in very unique ways and mm. brings the people from the back of the class forward. I remember Beto did this whole thing. He called it, he calls it the battle. He does this whole thing. And so he breaks the class in two and they have like a dance battle. And, and that kind of like, people come out of the class and they're like, wow, that was fun. And they start talking and they become friends and, you know, it's that uniqueness and, and I think that that creates community. Mm. So Alberto, you and I have been in the industry probably too long to remember. I think <laughs> we probably did meet a lot longer than you think. Maybe 2007. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm thinking the first time I went uh, to the UK was 2007. That's probably uh, that's probably about uh, about right. That's only <clears throat> years. Um, if you were looking at the wider movement and fitness industry, and you could change one thing about it. What would that be? Well, think about that. Currently, what's happening yep. right now, what I would like to change is 
everything that's happening with GLP-1 drugs, with Ozempic and all the GLP-1 drugs, worries me a little bit that people are saying, oh, I'll take this instead of working out. And there's, there's a group that says, I'll take this instead of working out. There's another group that says, I'll take this, but because I'm going to lose muscle, I'll do weights. And then there's another group that says, no, I still need to do a cardio because that's longevity. I have to have my VO2 max. I have to like be able to breathe. I have to be able to move. And I think that what one thing I would change is I would really emphasize the fact that even if you're on one of these drugs, movement is probably even more important than than not moving. And so, so you'd important. want the fitness industry to keep promoting the fact that, hey, despite all these other technologies and things that are coming in, let's keep pushing movement. Let's be a united force that say, hey, don't just look for the quick fix. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But there is no quick fix mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like those quick fixes have have repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, you and I have seen a lot of things come and go in the fitness industry. You know, I was involved in a club model, you're involved in an instructor model, you're, uh, we've seen people who are involved around equipment based models, there's yeah. all sorts of things that come in. If you were looking at the way you built Zumba, is there one mistake that you made that would other people could learn from now? So if you were, you know, there's young entrepreneurs listening to this all the time. Uh, what advice would you give them from a mistake you made when you were building Zumba? Hmm. I would think that one of the things, one of the mistakes we made, which we later corrected, and it actually started in the UK, was someone told us that in the UK, because instructors are um, employees, W2 employees, instead of being contractors, that we needed to work directly with the gyms and we needed to have a club model. And Zumba is meant to be driven by the passion of the instructors. Like every brand has their own, every format, every program has their own way of, of growing. And what had worked in the US, we were told will not work in the UK. And we tried that and it didn't work. And then we switched back to our our US model, which is just, you know, train the instructor, give the power to the instructor. And if the gym wants to have a Zumba class, they need to hire a licensed Zumba instructor. And it's instructor driven because that's who people want to see. They don't come for the Zumba class, they come for this person's Zumba class. And it's so critical in Zumba. In all formats, the instructor is critical in Zumba. I think it's even more, it's every person is unique. So I, I would say, Listen to your brand and don't let other people tell you uh, what your brand needs to be. You mean like these, uh, these Scottish guys who are running other systems that tell you that's the way to do it in the UK? Is that what you mean? Those type of people? Those type of people. <laughs> it wasn't you, though. I know it wasn't me. You I, know know exactly, it was. I know exactly who it was. I know what... Uh, Our first distributor there. was there. Yeah, I totally understand. So, technology. Um, you know, the internet, all of these things, social media, they exist now, they didn't before. How has Zumba brought them into play for the better or worse, right? Because yeah. community, as you mentioned, is very physical and in person. So what are the good things about it? And also with Zumba, maybe where do you guys kind of draw the line? Yeah, well, we've embraced technology since, since the very beginning because I came from that world. I, I understood the internet. I, I knew how to code. And so... For me, uh, being tech first, it was always important. Uh, social media arrived in you know the late 2000s and started shifting perspectives. Uh, we embraced it as a way to promote the Zumba class, as a way to promote Zumba instructors. We're one of probably, if not the most, or one of the most followed brands on social media. We have 3.6 million on Instagram, I think. Mm. And for a fitness brand, there's fitness personalities that have more. But if you look for fitness brands, I think we're the one that has the most. I think we have more than Peloton, more than uh, some of the big mm. names in terms of following. And so we embraced it. We embraced it as a way to bring new people into the class. Uh, during COVID, we embraced 
uh, virtual classes as well. Uh, we we launched uh, our own uh, technology that kind of was our own version of Zoom, where instructors could teach before before we incorporated Zoom. Then we incorporated Zoom, and so technology has always been been a driver. It's uh, sometimes it it's a threat. You know, like there is, if you go on YouTube, there's 10 million Zumba videos on YouTube. Just think about that number, 10 million individual videos, each with thousands of views, it's trillions and trillions of views. And so that's good because it promotes the brand, but it's also bad because it's uh, kind of out of control. We don't even know what some people are putting on there. And, and there are some people who are saying this is Zumba and it's not. And we don't allow full classes on YouTube and some people are doing it anyways. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good and bad always. Yeah. What's, um, what's the Zumba app and who is it for? Yeah. So we released the new Zumba app in January and this is our at home uh, version. So it's, it's like what the DVDs were and we hadn't released it before uh, because our instructor community uh, preferred us not to do it at that time. Uh, during COVID, they told us, hey, you should have an app because it promotes us, but just make sure you put us in the app. Mm -hmm. And so we put the Zumba class locator in the Zumba app and we put a, a bunch of Zumba classes on the app that are great classes from great instructors so that people can try it at home, but it's never meant to replace the Zumba class. It's meant to onboard new people. It's meant for people who are doing hybrid workouts. It's meant for people who might want to take a, a one hour class at the gym and then a 20 minute class the next day at home. And so it's meant for Zumba, your, your Zumba lifestyle. Now we here at All Welcome are really happy that this is more than just a podcast. We're partners with you now. We're helping each other, uh, which is really exciting as part of that community. One thing I noticed is that you've added a new methodology to your company called Strong Nation. Can you explain yep. what that is and why did you launch that? Yeah, so that's a that's a fun story because I was in a, a fitness trade show. I don't remember which one with Beto and we said, let's take one of these hit classes. And so we, we were taking a hit class and Beto told me the music doesn't match. I'm like, what do you mean the music doesn't match? It's like the music doesn't match. Like we're, we're, we're exercising to the beat. I can feel the beat. I, I, I can't dance, but I can feel a beat sometimes. Hmm. And, and he's like, no, the music doesn't match. Let me show you when we get back. So when we got back to Miami, we went to the music studio and he had one of our producers there. And he said, now look at this. He created this routine and then told the producer, now make every punch have the same sound in the routine. Every squat should sound the same and make it sound like an electronic feel and almost like Pavlov's dogs, you know, like when they rang the bell, they started salivating yeah. because they got used to it. And it's the same thing when you hear that sound, you do a burpee or you do a squat and you forget you're not counting anymore. You forget how many you've done. And so you can do more. And it's almost like, Remember that the Rocky training scenes that were so inspirational because the music was so mm. cool with the movements. But then when you went and trained, it didn't feel that way. So we wanted to kind of create like an epic soundtrack with the moves matching sounds. And, and I think it's, it's amazing. I love the class. So this, this was you guys coming up with this, this wasn't demanded by your community. People at Zumba didn't say this. This was just, again, your internal inspiration. This is, yeah, this was a moment where we said, wouldn't it be cool if we could score music to workouts and just like movies get scored the music and, and that's how it began. And now we have 750,000 people taking strong nation every week. Wow. So that's really, that's, and when did you start it? That was around 2017, I believe. Very cool. Very cool. That is very cool. And we have another class that we just launched called Circle Mobility. Okay. So it's also a music-based uh, flexibility, stretching, and mobility class. We use sound frequencies. I don't know if you've heard of uh, binaural beats. 
mm -hmm. where you, you're listening to different sound frequencies and it creates a really cool mental state of, of relaxation. And yeah, so we we released Circle Mobility last year and our instructors are getting trained on it. And it's, it's a great format. So we'll have um, a bunch of people listening that are business owners, maybe they want to start their business, um, take it to another level. You've, in doing research on you and just hearing you today, you've had quite a career um, in through who you've met, kind of what you've created. So how are you different to other leaders in, in the space? Well, it's a hard question because I think we're all very different. And I think I would say that I'm very extremely curious and extremely open-minded and I'm always learning and, and I really love learning about what other people are doing, about the industry, uh, about different business models. Uh, I got, I went crazy when, when large language models came out and learned everything I could about AI. And now we have a uh, multiple AI projects inside the business to make us more efficient. And so I just love learning and I'm very curious. And I think uh, that makes me different from some people. Yeah. Would you say those two traits are crucial to for someone like you in your role? I think in an industry that changes so much, I think being curious is so important. It's, it's critical and not every partner in a business needs to be curious, but there needs to be someone, one of them needs to be extremely curious, looking for new things. Otherwise eh, you get left behind. For those listening, what piece of advice would you like to share that either want to, or in the midst of, or trying to build a powerhouse like Zumba? Well, one thing is we didn't set out to build a powerhouse. Like we didn't set, set out to build a huge company. We just went step by step and we looked at what's our next milestone. Like uh, we want to uh, launch the infomercial. And we thought maybe that we were going to be an infomercial company and we we're going to launch multiple products. And Zumba was just going to be one. Like me and the other Alberto, not Beto, but the other Alberto, we were talking about, okay, now we're going to find other things we can sell on TV. And, and then but Zumba kept calling us back. And so we listened to it. We listened to the brand. We listened to what the consumers were telling us. And I think listening is very important. Uh, being curious is very important. Uh, your, your goals should not be like, I want to create the biggest Pilates company in the world. It should be something that's achievable. And then you learn and you iterate. You don't just stick to the same because our path was very wavy. We didn't know we were going to end up training instructors. We thought we we're going to just sell DVDs. We never thought we we're going to launch a video game. We launched a video game, sold 14 million copies, but we did a lot of things. We didn't, we did a lot of things that didn't work. We tried nutrition. We, we tried selling a shake and that did not work. And so you just go in and out of failure and you iterate and you learn and you're curious and you move forward to the next goal. And that's what, that's the beauty of business. That's, where the magic happens. It's not a straight line and you just have to really be listening and absorbing everything. Yeah, you, you've always fascinated me because you're kind of similar to me. You're, you're, you just did it there. You're open to talk, talk about your failures. You're very comfortable in saying that didn't work. Laura and I had a business last year where we set up a shop and we thought this would be a great thing to do and it failed miserably. And we are happy and comfortable that we iterated to All Wellco and that's now going going great. And I think that's something that I would suggest to people is that if you fail, just have the courage to let it go and just move on. It's, it's the one thing I'm trying to work on in my golf game when I have a bad shot. Don't throw the club on the ground. Just remember yeah. there's another 20 shots coming that you're going to hit. You're gonna we hit proudly tried it and, and listen to it. It's going to teach you something. Mm -hmm. and, and just learn about what, what it, it, that failure wanted to teach you. And some of the best companies in the world are fail over and over. Look at Amazon. Amazon, yeah. remember the Fire Phone? They had a yeah. phone. No one remembers that Amazon actually tried to launch a phone. But you just try many things until things work. 
And I think in the health and fitness industry, it's hard for people because a lot of people are driven by their ego and particularly with social media. And it's one of the things that we certainly, we're trying to build this community of sharing perspectives. It's not about your yep. perspective is right, but share the perspective so we can all learn from it. So one of our values, one of our values uh, at the company, which I think is the most important value is ego is not your amigo. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Oh, make it, yeah. I'm going to make a shirt. Yeah. Hey, that sounds, it, he's probably selling shirts. Okay. No, no, no we'll, we'll, shirt. We'll, we'll make a shirt for you. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so come on, take us, take us for what's next for Zumba. What's next for you? Oh, wow. Well, we have lots of innovation coming on the app side. There's lots of new features coming up. There's new innovations on the instructor uh, benefits side that are coming. Uh, we're releasing a few of them at the Zumba convention next week. So I don't want to ruin the, the surprise. Uh, so there's just more of great value being offered to our instructors and great support being offered to them. Uh, there's uh, the app is coming up with a bunch of new features and we just keep moving. That's, you know, that's what we do. We have new partnerships and uh, we just announced a partnership with Samsung. Uh, we are announcing a partnership at the Zumba convention next week with another amazing company. The CEO is going to be there and yeah. So now it's about just, we keep moving. So I, th I think, you know, um, our podcast is all about strength, perspective, and kindness. So we've got listeners who may themselves want to get involved with Zumba strong nation, or what was your third program again? Circle mobility. Circle mobility. They may want to get involved in that, or more importantly, they will have young up and coming people who want to train, want to be an instructor, want to get out there. How, how do they become part of Zumba, Strong Nation, any of these programs? What do they do? Yeah, well, I know that we're, we have an offer with you guys where they can get a discount on a Zumba training and they take that discount code and they go to Zumba.com and that's where they start. They go uh, become an instructor, click on become an instructor and they can take the training either online or in person. And, and it's a very fun training, inspirational training. And even if... Some people don't know if they really want to teach. Uh, they uh, still love the training and what it does for them and the confidence that it gives them and the friendships that it creates. It's a very fun day. Some people are like, oh, I, I went to see uh, Tony Robbins, but I actually got more from, from my B1 instructor training in terms okay. of confidence and in terms of uh, feeling good about what I'm doing. And so... Uh, we really put a lot of work in that, into that training into making it a, an amazing experience and an amazing day. And can I choose the methodology? Or do I have to start with Zumba? Can I choose no, any Zumba or Strong Nation? Uh, circle Mobility right now is only available for either Zumba or Strong Nation instructors. Got it. You have to okay, that's start in one of those paths. But you could also do Jumpstart Gold or Jumpstart Kids, which is Zumba. Zumba Gold or Zumba Kids. Yeah. And... If you only want to reach those populations, you could just say you're a teacher at school, you want to take a Zumba Kids training, you could do something called Jumpstart Kids on our website. Or if you want to teach uh, seniors, which is a huge growing market, uh, you could teach Zumba Gold. Yeah, I, I'm just going to try and bring back to one of the things that you and Lauren mentioned a couple of times, which is loneliness. I, I think that there are lots of people out there. You will know somebody who needs to become a Zumba instructor who needs this to pick up their life. I really recommend and suggest go and give that person that opportunity, show kindness to them, get them to go and become an instructor. And obviously we at All Well Co. want to help that from a financial perspective and partnership with, with you. Thank you. Yeah, it really does change lives. Andy mentioned earlier, the theme of our podcast is strength, kindness, and perspective. To show kindness, is there someone who embodies values that you'd just like to give a leg up, support, um, someone you'd like to shout out as inspiration, just anyone with influence. Can it be the whole Zumba instructor community? Sure. Anybody you like. Yeah. I think the Zumba instructor community has taught me so many things about kindness, about perseverance, about including everyone, about just uh, opening up your heart 
I mean, the stories that we hear, and that's that's one of the things when you ask me what questions, like what are the stories that we've heard around Zumba are incredible. Like people uh, surviving an illness and saying that Zumba was the one thing that kept them going. Uh, an instructor uh, lost her leg because of a blood clot and had to have it amputated and and had a prosthetic leg and she kept teaching and she teaches with her prosthetic leg and she's amazing and she has a, a packed yeah. class. We are the first ones that I know of to have an instructor uh, with Down syndrome teaching in the app. So she's actually has a class called Zumba for All in the Zumba app that is incredible. And her mom came to me and she said, I don't know if it wasn't for Zumba, hey, she might've been just, you know, bagging groceries or something and, and feeling unfulfilled, but she teaches Zumba four times a week. And thank you for giving my daughter a chance. And I'm like, it was her, she found Zumba, I didn't do anything. And her name is Yulisa and you can find her on the Zumba app. And she was on, on People Magazine and we had a whole story on this because Zoom was about opportunities as well. And, and the instructors were the ones who taught me all of this. Mm. So a shout out to them. Gave me the chills. Yeah, that was just a wonderful story. And, and I want to just end it with by saying congratulations. I just saw that you got included in the top 50 list of um, fitness um, entrepreneurs of the year. Very, very well deserved. And we are really excited to be partnering thank with you. you. And uh, thank you for your help with All Well Coaching. Just quickly before you sign off, don't forget to visit network.allwellco.com and join our professional network. You'll get to enjoy exclusive benefits from brands we love and have access to a community where learning and professional development are always at the forefront of everything we do.